Welcome back. This is the third part of the Epsom salt desulfation series here. Uh, we got that Alfa Romeo battery here again. Let's see if it's made a little bit of a difference after uh, being charged again. And uh, no, it's about the same. It's a little lower now than it was before. I think this because this one's been sitting longer after being recharged, whereas before it was right off the charger we tested it. Now, and this one wasn't really too bad to begin with. So, why don't we take that one off the table? That's a heavy battery. And we got this bugger, where when we had it, no, it had a weak cell slash possibly just a uh, completely dead cell. Um, now, if you remember, immediately after testing this one, after uh, putting the Epsom salt mixture into into the uh, battery, it did right away, be even without mixing it, test higher. So, let's get the uh, correct... cranking amp here, cold cranking amp, 550. Now this one's right off the test, the uh, charger, just like it was before, so this one's more of a more accurate test. Now if you take a look, 14.46 ohm resistance, before we were at over 700, and yes, 13.68 volts is higher than a battery normally is. Remember, I just took this one immediately off the charger, Whereas before, immediately off the charger, um, it read like 10.7 volts and had like 700 something ohms. And we're up to 244 cold cranking amps we're out of uh, 550 that it's supposed to have. So, right now, it looks like we're pretty successful. Now, the cell that we thought was bad, cell number two here, is actually slightly warm at the moment. Which means we've still got some pretty high resistance going on there. I'm going to pop that cap and see if I can tell any visual change inside. There's it, uh, sorry, I had it reversed. Cell 2 right here. That was the one that was warm before. Because I have the battery facing the opposite direction as I did before. But uh, let's see if there's any visual change inside that, that one cell. It did look pretty darn bad. Wow. Uh, there is a visual change. Uh, the electrolyte in the battery actually looks muddy. Looks like a muddy little puddle. So if something's going on in there. Now as this battery was a lost cause to begin with, uh, don't really mind what I did. That could possibly even destroy it further. So, I am actually going to put a little bit more Epsom salt in each cell of this battery. Why did I just close this one? I was going to do that anyways. Just a little bit. Not. I'm not even going to mix it up with the water. I'm just going to put a tiny bit in, slosh it around, and then we'll have our fourth and final part of this series of videos. Um, showing the final final uh, result for this specific battery. Now as this battery, um, I didn't have it on that charge for too long, only about an hour before taking it and just doing this test again right now. Because of that I am going to leave it on the smart charger overnight and uh, let it either go to its, through its full cycle. Now the smart charger will automatically turn off when it feels the battery is fully charged or if it detects that the battery is bad and not taking any more charge which is what was happening before with this battery it was shutting off at a, after about an hour
this time it actually took a charge. Now the meter on the uh, smart charger read 88% charged uh, when I just took it off right now. So according to the smart charger it was not done charging yet, yet we still did our test. Bada bing. That's uh the charger back on there. Whoops. Got a wire around the uh, tripod. Now, uh, a series of chargers I like to use. I love the. Uh, I got some postal service tape there. Ship a lot of packages. That's all I had on hand at the moment. I accidentally ran this over with a trailer, but I like the Schumacher Speed Charge series. Uh, this one's a ship and shore, 15 amp, 10 amp, and 2 amp. Fully automatic. And I guess we can turn this video into a little bit of a review of this chart of this style charger as well. It's also got its own built-in little desulfation series in, in it, which does not work very well. Sorry, gotta move that. It's fine for prolonging the life of a battery if it's not bad to begin with, but if it is bad, like in this condition, it will not revive see my other videos uh, about the capacitive battery chargers uh, for actual desulfation of batteries. Um, will not recover damaged cells, but it can reduce the sulfation. Um, you know what? Scratch that. We're going to not do it in part four. We're going to actually go all the way to part five. The next part will be after this battery's had a complete charge with the Schumacher. Oh. Since the voltage, surface voltage hasn't settled yet, yeah, thinks it's at 100%. It is not, and if I do that, I'm going to select 15 amp and just let her go. But uh, we'll go do a part five. But first, we'll see what this one reads after a full charge. And then we'll use one of my capacitive battery chargers. Uh, they're a charger that I build myself. I build them in numerous different sizes. Um, they universally will charge anything from about 12 volts up to a 140 volts off a of standard 120 out and uh, very few parts on it and I build them mostly for the electric cars that we build uh, such as my Alfa Romeo uh, which is uh, running a 132 volt system right now I have eight capacitors in the charging system on that car which of course you can look at our other videos on uh, converting your car to electric. Right now I think we're up to 31 parts, um, video, separate video segments on that. And uh, we also have a written guide that, that corresponds with the videos. So, I think we'll leave it at that for this video. Make sure uh, those clamps on there are nice and tight. And I guess I'll clean up the rest of this junk that we got around here. And um, also keep an eye open for our other solar panel grid tie system. Um, we're going to work on that to uh, grid tie a solar panel right into any 110, 120 volt power outlet. Up to 300 watts with the device we, we have. We're going to review that device. And um, as you cannot plug a 12-volt battery directly into that device, uh, we found a neat little module that's uh, relatively inexpensive that uh, will let you plug a battery directly into it. So if you're like me and have time to use electric, where your electric's expensive during the day, you can charge the battery at cheap rates at night and sell it back to the power company during the day at the higher rates, or reduce your, your own usage during the day where the higher rates are. I know I practically eliminated my daytime power usage and shifted all that usage to at night effectively cutting my power bill in half. More on that to come. Don't forget to see our other videos and uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow with our, with our next video. Cheers and have a good night.